Hello and welcome to episode 116 of the Boot Nerds podcast. Jay, Mike, what's up? <laughs> I'm, I'm good, my man. I don't know about you. Uh, just before we started, we talked about which episode it is and you said, what, 168 or something? One, 155. We are I mean, not even we've, close. We've made a lot of Boot Nerds podcast episodes, but uh, I mean, we haven't made that many. But <laughs> look, man, I am, uh, I'm good. I'm excited for today's uh, podcast as always. Um, how are you? Wait, let me guess. Let me guess. Uh, you're not too bad, and the weather <laughs> in Canada is is you're not mad at it. You no, know, we've right. had so much rain lately. It looks oh. like the rain is over, but it, so, honestly, it's been really good over here. Things are kind of like getting somewhat back to normal. You've been able to play sports again. Okay. Go to the gym now. Like there's wow. things that, like my old routine is kind of coming back, and it's really nice. So Plus all the new boot releases. Is, so so what you're telling me is that when it was bad weather you couldn't go to the gym? Well, no, the, the gyms have been closed until like a couple days ago. Oh, here. because of lockdown. Yeah. Ah. Like we're, we were like one of the last places to really start opening up. So. Oh, wow. Okay, that's a, that's a brand new world then. It's a yeah, brand it's, new world. It's very exciting. Okay, so then coming out, you know, seeing uh, friends again, playing football, new releases all over the place. That's, I mean, that's not a... Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a bad life, this. Life is good right now. Life is good. That's, uh, I'm, I mean, and that's surprisingly positive. No <laughs> coming from you and all. You're like, yeah, it's, it's fairly decent. <laughs> anyway, Josh, uh, today's going to be a good one. Um, we're going to talk about this bad boy right here. What you also have in your hands is the Rodacious uh, uh, Phantom GT2. Uh, we're going to talk about, obviously, that, uh, but we're also going to touch on other so-called... Um, I don't want to. I don't want to say what I call them off camera, but I, you know, I call them like kind of uh, far fetched uh, upgrades or updates, which uh, covers that they do like small changes here and there that most people won't really notice, and that you have to be like a boot nerd to really notice. And then they call it two or three. It's it's basically to them a new generation. We're going to talk about that. What we feel. Uh, hint hint. I don't think we're too. We don't take too kindly to that concept overall. But uh, more on that, we're also, of course, going to answer uh, a bunch of questions later on. So if you have any and you'd like us to answer them, uh, leave them in the comment section right down below where you can also chip in with your thoughts on the brands making these, what did I call it? Far-fetched generational upgrades. That's going to be a thing in this episode. So, Josh, um, Phantom, it, it kind of went under the radar because they, of course, also leased, uh, released uh, the Chembo Legend 9. But Nike went from the Nike Phantom GT, which stands for generative texture, to the Nike Phantom GT 2, meaning that uh, you would expect a new boot with generative texture on it. Uh, but if you take a look at the so-called uh, Phantom GT 2, it, uh, it's had a new texture, which is this uh, chevron, almost like V-shaped, almost arrowhead-like texture. Mm -hmm on more or less the entire boot. And it's not exactly the same all over, but it kind of is, you know, in some places the arrow heads are more aggressive and bigger, but I mean, compared to having the different angles and sizes and lengths of the first GT, is this really that much generative texture still? No, it is far more generic. It is the but, uh, but it's still GT. <laughs> yeah, it's still GT. They figured they figured that part out. But uh I don't know. I don't think that's they would want us to, you know, just mention it as the Nike Phantom generic texture in the future. <laughs> uh, uh, anyways, uh that's a that's a whole other ballgame. But I mean sure, you it, <laughs> There is a bit of variance to it, so I guess you technically can call it generative texture. But I mean, for me, that was a little bit, ha. Ah. Uh, then they gave us these uh, debossed, embossed, I never, I'll never know. Embossed, I would say. Emboss, small uh, indentations in the upper, basically like uh, these elongated outline pills, which are there for show. <laughs> it's a part of the, the the graphics, and then they have this like um, external heel tap on the heel, which is it's it looks nice, but hey, it's it's just there. And then of course there's a new graphic, but all things being equal, oh, you're, these... you're forgetting something. It also has trilingual ACC, so it's now if the rain speaks a different language or something like that, you're good. 
That's nice. <laughs> How do you say generic texture in Japanese or French? Try me French. Texture oh, generique. Mm. <laughs> I, it would probably be something like that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Off okay. the top of my head, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, um, what what are your like? What what are your thoughts on this? Because because this, you know, yes, it it is technically a different boot to to the first generation, but it is also the GT2. So when you heard that there was a new GT2 and you, you got this, what was your first reaction? My my first reaction is. For me, whenever a new boot comes out, I, I like to look at it from, from two perspectives. The boot nerd perspective, where I'm kind of looking for specific details that I know are going to impact the experience of that boot positively or negatively. And then I also like to look at the marketing angle that the brand has gone for, because that's ultimately the perspective that the average consumer is is. It's going to be a big part of how they perceive the boot the first time they see it. And I think a big thing that I had an issue with with the original Phantom GT is they had this cool, elaborate story about the generative texture. And, and, and you can see that they've clearly done something that is very intricate. There was some thought put into every single little line on that upper. The end result was something pretty unexceptional because we've seen texture on football boots plenty of times before. So with the GT2, what I would anticipate is some kind of an evolution of that concept. And I feel like the GT2 just... It's a gigantic contradiction of what they originally introduced with the GT technology in the first place. And that's something that I, it's just, I, I hate to use the word deceptive because I feel like that's a bad word to use when you're talking about football boots that are ultimately very good. But I just feel like it's it's such a big contradiction from Nike that it when a new model comes out, people assume it's better. And I don't think they've done that here. They've they've simply recycled what they had before and and maybe simplified it even more than they needed to. Sure. And, and then on the other hand, is it worse? I I think that's no. that would that would be harsh to say. No. But but I, I know what you're saying. And the thing is, yes, you know, looking inspecting it closer, I'm not as mad at it as I was first. I just thought it was the same, you know, texture with the same spacing, same size all over, which would have made no sense to call it GT whatsoever. But the thing is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but if I if I if I remember correctly, they did the same thing with having like different zones and 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 you know uh, density of the of the placement of of the texture on the Phantom Vision as well. So yeah. you had those, you know, the bigger bigger shapes, uh, bigger textures in the the passing zone and all that stuff. And this is the same here. So, but to to a, even a less extreme extent. Yeah. And yeah. also, I'd have to pull out a Phantom Vision to really. Confirm, but I feel like this might even be a recycled texture pattern. It's, it's not. I uh, I looked it's at not. it the other day, but it, it looks a lot like it, especially the one on the first find. We, you had those windmill shapes. Yeah. Uh, so these are, I, I thought the same and it re really reminded me of the first Phantom and it was, uh, it's close, I would say. Uh, but you know, you can only do so many shapes, right? I'm just- sure. Um, I don't think it, it affects the, the feel and especially not the performance of the boots, but it's just not, for me, this doesn't warrant calling it a, a Phantom GT2. I'd rather that Nike had done, and I know you have the hype venom on the table because we talked about it beforehand, but uh, I, I'd rather what they did, they realized, okay, the uh, the first couple of uh, of upper iterations are are too soft. There's there's too little structure in it. So they just updated it, still called it the hype venom one because it was the same. They made little changes and made it a little bit more sturdy and, and stable. Mm -hmm. um, but 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 you had to know to know. Mm -hmm. and, and this feels like they're kind of you know it feels over exaggerated and like they're trying to create hype because to, to make it fresh. And it just it, it feels like a little bit to me like they're they're doing themselves a, a bit of a disfavor because if, if people get these and they they find out that okay they're they're just. They're the same boots, just with a, you know, a very, very small facelift. To some people, it would be insignificant. Are they then going to, you know, next time, it's kind of like crying wolf. Are they going to believe the hype around a new generation next time? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, look, there's, there's the perspective of if it's not broken, don't fix it. And I feel like we've both said that about certain football boots at certain times. Um, I don't think the Phantom GT was so good that it, it 
there was no room for improvement. Um, I, I think where I kind of take issue with this being a new model is, yeah, they have made some physical changes, although very minor, but, and you can answer this question. I'll give my answer as well. If I had a GT one on one foot and a GT two on the other foot and started playing, I don't think I would notice that I was wearing two different boots. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, and that's the thing. I, I, I like the GT. I think it's a, I think it's a nice boot. I wouldn't, I wouldn't hate wearing it. Um, I, I enjoy myself uh, wearing these. And I, I, I have enjoyed wearing the, I wore the, the, the rodacious ones for the, the playtest. It was a nice experience, but it was like wearing the, the first ones. And I think, you know, the yeah. new graphics, they, it looks good on the, on the Renew pack here, as the, the black pack is called. But just like, call it the Phantom GT, that's, it is what it is. Yeah, um, and, we, and that's the thing with Nike too. We've seen them do subtle refreshes like this sure, and then sure. not change the name. Right, but but I mean, let's not only take shots at Nike here because you know oh, it's yeah. just we we just that, that was what sparked this episode was that we both um, <laughs> basically fell on the whole generative texture versus generic texture. Oh, <laughs> uh, and it, you know, again, they're not bad boots. I would happily go out and buy them. I think I think you know they're nice football boots, but just don't. Don't make them more than they are. Anyways, Puma have done the same with uh, the future sets. So we all know the um, the Spectra pack here, future sets, cool. This is the future set 1.1. Right. Then they have just released these, which are absolutely outstandingly cool, these, by the way. Um, guess what they're called? Hint, future it's not 1.1. Z 1.2. Yes. <laughs> and it's uh, the future set 1.1, but with a slightly different texture on the upper. So the whole uh, Grip Control Pro, uh -huh. as it's still called. Yeah, it's still called Grip Control Pro. They have the same uh, technical uh, details here. It's just slightly different. And that's the, that's as far as I can tell, the, the only change from the 1.1 to 1.2. It was the same on the Ultra, 1.1 to 1.2. Yeah, they took the, you know, the colored weave and, and took it back to the heel. That, that's it. I, I did it, but that's one, see the Ultra I think is even worse because that's that's a boot where like the blue color where it came out and all of a sudden I, I had posted a video and titled it Puma Ultra 1.1 or I think I said it was Ultra 1.1 and somebody in the comments like, it's actually Josh, it's an Ultra 1.2 and I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> but it was the same with the like the future, <laughs> the, the, the 6.1, all of a sudden, you know, what, what was it called before? It was called 5.1. 5 5 1. 1. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah. But those names before were like, there's yeah. so, anyways, that's a whole don't, other discussion. Don't but, change the name if you didn't change the boot. But I, it was I'm the exact same thing. Yeah, there was no difference at all. And like, and I even think, like I, we're using Puma as an example, Adidas is really, really bad for this. Um, the one that really jumps in my mind is Predator 18 and Predator 19. Oh, with the rubber tab on the heel? Ridiculous. Yeah, like that was dumb. And then the Nemesis, you know, you went from the Nemesis 19 plus to the Nemesis plus. Yeah. Because it got some texture on it. It was, it was a nicer experience to play with, sure, but just call it that. Anyway. I'm, I'm less mad at that one. Then there's, we have these two as well. Adidas is really famous for this, to be honest. You have the Copa 19 plus and then the Copa 20 plus where the 20 plus incorporated this cool, it almost looks like a wood grain texture, but then yeah, at some point pattern. they just decided that they don't need it anymore and it reverted mm. back to the old model. So the new 20 plus without the fingerprint pattern was essentially the 19 plus, but now it's called 20 plus. Yes. Because logic. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and, and we also, you know, recently saw with, uh, with the New Balance Tequilas here, we saw the, the first edition uh, of the Tequila 3 Plus, which is the Tequila 3 with a slightly nicer knitted tongue. I'll give them that and a slightly rearranged um, 3D knitted pattern on the back. It's the same boot, would I? Still, it's still got the, the flaws that I pointed out with, uh, with the first Tequila 3. It was like, just don't, just call it the 3. Yeah. I'm just, I mean, it's, a, I, it's a nicer sock, but yeah. Would I wear it? I probably would. Uh, I, look, I think we would both agree that I don't have a problem with a brand taking an already good football boot and making subtle refinements to it. But those subtle refinements need to be justified in that when I put that sure. boot on my feet, 
I need to be able to tell whether it's the fit, whether it's the touch, whether it's the stud pattern. There has to be something that makes the experience at the just something different sure, from sure. the model that replaces if you're going to give it a brand new name. But um, giving stuff a new name and calling it a new model when, when you've changed the bare minimum that doesn't change the experience yeah, yeah, yeah. in any way at all. That is where I, I just I think it's deceptive. I, I Do don't you, like that. Do you remember the uh, the Adidas X eighteen point one, especially to to X nineteen, where they actually you know we we all said at the time that it was ah oh, you know, is it that big of a change? But it, for me, it was enough of a change to warrant mm -hmm. a new generation name because it actually meant something in terms of of the fit and the feel. It was a nicer upper material, uh, and and also you know. It's a little bit far-fetched this, but but tell me if you agree. I think the Vapor 12 to Vapor 13, they still went with knit. It was a nicer knit and they introduced the high tenacity yarns, which really, really changed the fit and, the, and also the performance of the boot. That was, you know, those are the kind of upgrades that I want to see and really warrants a new generation name. Because for me, a new generation name, uh, model, you know, predator, mutated to freak and all that stuff. We need something... Um, we need a significant change for those things to happen because otherwise, as you say, deceptive is, is too harsh of a word, but it becomes a little bit, you know, of a blurred line in terms of when can you actually, when can you trust the hype that these new generations build? Yeah. And then look, and that's, that's the point of all these brands having different lines of football boots is they have this base concept of what this football boot is going to feel and perform like. And then you should build on that concept making either big improvements or subtle improvements with each new model. And then when you get to a point when you feel like there's nowhere else to go, you either change the model entirely or you, you just kill it. And I, I think we've seen Nike do that with the Phantom Vision. Sure. After Vision 2, we saw them do that with Phantom Venom. We didn't even get a Phantom Venom 2, which is... Nem nemesis, you know. Yeah. Like there's... I, I just, I don't like them coming out with new models for the sake of coming out with new models. But is it our fault, Josh? Is it like as consumers, as, you know, uh, uh, content creators, you and you and me, uh, it's not it's not your fault, it's not my fault exclusively, but, you know, uh, content creators, uh, uh, opinionators, can you say that? Uh, but, but, you know, consumers, we demand new things all the time. We want new stuff to happen, otherwise we lose interest and, you know, the brands don't sell. So is that is is, is what we're seeing here a, a, a result of that constant pressure on the brands to to create newness all the time? Do you know what I'm saying? I, I get what you're saying. Have and we created I think, this monster ourselves? I think I think that's a part of it. I think I think new product does generate hype. There's no question sure, about sure. that. But then I also look at how Nike launched the Phantom GT2, and it's very un-Nike like to not even make a post about it on social yeah, media. Yeah, sure, it just like pops up one day. But maybe that's because they know that it's kind of bullshit. Sorry, but Nike, that's, but and that's what I'm saying. And, 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 and just don't name it the two, and no one's complaining. We're not making this video. <laughs> and I feel like all the brands do. We saw this with with Puma when they did the Ultra 1.2. We saw this yeah. with Adidas every time they've done this like number switch without really changing anything. Sure, they just sure. pop up one day, and we find out, hey, it's new. I don't and, know. And, and I, again, and again, th that's the thing. Well, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm basically not mad about it because the, the boots aren't getting any worse. I'm just getting these like false uh, expectations and false hopes. And, and then I come and look at the boots and I'm like, oh, it's the, it's the same. Because new is always nice. New is always, yeah. it's not technically always better. Uh, Hyper Venom wanted to. <clears throat> but, uh, but nah, it's, it's just something that's been like bugging me. And, and should, it, should it make you mad at the brands or think that, oh, Nike, Nadia, and Puma are just such douchebags are doing it. I don't really think so, but it's just, it's something that is for me a little bit unnecessary and creates, I don't want to say distrust, but it's just, it just makes me at least, so I guess other people too, a little bit more skeptical when we get something new. I'm a little bit more hesitant to, to jump in with both feet first and just, you know, take my money. Because I, I yeah. want to see it and, and then experience it first. So they've kind of, you know, um, it's kind of backfired for me, at least in, in my head a little bit. What, and am look, I, I, I'm, am I mad? No. Uh, it's, that's, I, okay, I think it's, that's, that's, that's definitely uh, a thing. Certifiably mad. But uh, do you know what I mean? A little bit, yeah. yeah a little bit, yeah. But it's like I said I earlier. I think you have to look at it from two different perspectives as far as consumers are concerned, right? You have the boot nerd perspective where there's people that are waiting for 
guys like me and you to share our opinion on the Phantom GT2. Mm-hmm. And then it ultimately ends up being very disappointing when we have to say well, is it it's the same as the it's GT1. Just, it's, is it disappointing? It's just the same. It's okay, but w- there's underwhelming. I, I think there's a small percentage of the football boot market that goes out and seeks this information and educates themselves on what they're buying. Sure, sure, sure. Right? But are you, are you Nike, disappointed no, with the two? Because that's, I am. that's not, I'll, I'll let you finish in a second, but just are you disappointed with this? Yeah, I am 100%. Uh, 100%. Okay. I, I, I think that they had a cool concept with the original GT as unextraordinary as I think it was in a lot of ways. I think it's a it's a good football boot. And, mm-hmm. I, and I would have loved to have seen them evolve that concept in some way. And they, they didn't do that. That's like there's point. physically nothing about the boot that offers a different experience. And that sucks right. in my right. opinion. Yeah. But okay. like I'm saying, the average consumer who doesn't really know much about football boots, maybe they had the original GT and they go to the Nike store or they go online, wherever it may be, and they see this GT2 and, oh, GT2 is out. Uh, Phantom GT1 is on sale for half price, but you know what? I want the new one because it's probably better. And that's, I think that's what a lot of people just perceive newer as better. Mm-hmm. And that's what the brands are kind of banking on when they release stuff like this is like, oh, you know what? There's not that much interest around this product anymore. Let's just change the name and change the graphics, call it something different. And hopefully that's going to generate some interest amongst consumers who are not going to go out there and do the research and, and think that they're getting a better product. And look, yeah, yeah. it's the name of the game. They're trying to sell boots, right? That's yeah, that's that's what it is. But I don't like, I just think there's a deceptiveness to that when it comes to the people that aren't doing the research and aren't in the know. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, it would just be, you know, it would, it wouldn't hurt them to be a bit more, or, or, you know, maybe they would just, if there was a little bit more transparency in what it would take to, to get a new model name or new generational name, I, you know, it's not a big deal for me. And again, I'm not, I'm not mad at anyone. It's just, uh, it's, it's a funny little thing. It's funny. Yeah. Little thing. And look, it's, it's, I don't think this is something that is just a, a, a football boot specific thing. Right. right, we we see this oh, in wait, all forms iPhones. of industry, wow. right? But but even I was just going to bring up the iPhone. At least when the new iPhone comes out, maybe you're not going to be able to see or feel much of a difference if you already had the last new iPhone. But at least you can see on paper. Statistically, there are marginal improvements, even if it's a single percentage point. But, but statistically, there are marginal changes, even <laughs> if they are minimal. I mean, do you know what I mean? I, I just have a harder, if I can't perceive a single change when I'm playing in the boots, right. that to me, it doesn't count. Fair enough. You know, I'll, uh, I still think my point kind of stands because I'm, I'm also trying to be the devil's advocate here, but I, I'm buying your counter argument that it's, you know, there's, it's easier to, when you have more features in the iPhone that you can actually feel a significant change. Okay. Fair enough. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> okay. Um, any final closing comments on this? Can't wait for the GT3. <laughs> but just imagine, like, just imagine, Josh, if they had taken what I thought was, you know, the whole generative texture and, you know, it was created by an, an AI computer program software, all that stuff. It's a really cool story and they could do so many things with it, but it's just now they've, you know, if they made a GT2, I would be genuinely excited. Now, if they make a GT3, and even though it's the craziest thing to come out since sliced bread, and that was pretty significant. Yeah. I'm just going to be a little bit, ah, is it just a new texture on the upper? <laughs> yeah. Look, and look, we're really ragging on Nike here. This is not a oh, common no, no, no. thing for Nike to do. No, no, no. There's there's examples of it going way back, but- yeah. But I think but other brands are worse. It's just yeah, with the uh, yeah. Phantom GT2. And maybe that's why it's such a big deal for us because we're not used to seeing this from Nike. Yeah, like again, when has Nike ever released a brand new model and not even made a post about it? That is completely unheard of. And like I said in my video, I just really hope that this doesn't become a trend because it's a, it was an 11th month life cycle for yeah, the Phantom yeah. GT, which is mm. very un-Nike like as it is. So- well, let's just hope that we're not going to get a Vapor 15 and a Superfly mm. 9 that are kind of graphics packages. 
But they, did, have they didn't do that with uh, with the 13 and the Superfly 7 where they changed like the major graphical yeah. direction three uh -huh. times and it was, you know, nothing. The same name. Cool. I love that. Yes. That's the way it should run. And, you know, so... So no, no, I mean, we're not necessarily bashing Nike. It's just a, a trend in the market that personally I would like to see a little less of and more transparency mm -hmm. and a little bigger margin for when they, anyways. Uh, what are your thoughts out there behind the camera? Do you agree or uh, have we, like I said, um, lost our minds? Let us know in the comment section right <laughs> down below. And uh, Josh, before we move on to the questions, I wanna, well, you, you, uh, you brought it up actually. Uh, so uh, by now you will probably, already seen our thoughts on the brand new Jumbo Legend 9 Elite, um, which I have in my hand. But the plot twist is that I don't only have the Elites in my hand, I also have the Pros in my hand. And uh, the Pros are a little bit funny because you said you just got them in and I also just got them in and you uh, you wore them, uh, played in them and you, you had a bit of a, you know, a hard time telling the difference. So I went out, opened the box, put them on my foot, and I think I caught you laughing at my facial expression because it was really hard to tell the difference. And sure, the leather is not as nice and you know, it feels less plush and premium as you said, but not to the extent that I would expect for the drop in price. Yeah, it's $100 less expensive for $100. the Pro compared to the Elite. Yeah. Um, and, and, sure and the materials it, are different and all that stuff, but go on. Yeah, so there's there's four main differences that I could pick out. The first being the leather. It's not kangaroo leather. It's just listed as premium leather on Nike's website. So mm -hmm. let's assume calfskin. It doesn't nice matter. Enough, though. So it's a different type of leather. It is slightly thinner. So it might not feel that soft to the touch. Once it's on your feet, it's very difficult to tell a difference in softness, but make contact with the ball and you can tell the pro is a little bit less plush than the kangaroo leather on the elite. The other thing you're going to notice is the tongue material might be different, it but it's, I, it, it, it's so subtle. Again, you're not going to feel it when you actually have socks on your feet, but you can see the little bordering edge instead of being fused, they've stitched it, which again, not a significant difference at all. The sole plates you can see are constructed differently in terms of how the mold is done, but yeah, ultimately end up feeling the same on your feet. Yeah. Oh, this is the other thing we didn't go over. They weigh virtually the same thing. They're within like four or five grams of each other. So there's no significant weight difference. Okay. And then really the most noticeable thing, the only thing that would be the giveaway, if I had a blindfold on and you slid both on my feet, the heel liner. Sure. It is better on the Elite. It's softer. Uh -huh. It's that soft kind of suede material where mm. it just has a more basic synthetic leather liner on the Pro. But if you put that heel liner in the Pro, I don't think I would be able to tell a difference between the two. They're, just, they're identical. I just had both on and, uh, you know, the, the, the tooling on the Elite is nicer, it's stiffer in the midfoot. Uh, but I'm surprised to know that they're that close. Uh, but honestly, like value for money... If, I always want the best product, sure. Yeah. But if I'm on a budget, I'm buying the Pro. Because that yeah. is, this is genuinely, um, I'm not going to go out on a limb here and say that it's it's the best takedown I've ever seen in my life, but it's, I'm impressed with this. It's there. Like I would compare it to um, Vapor 10. What was the takedown model? Veloce 1 or 2? I'll I'll be honest here, Josh. I never ever understood those. Was it? It's probably the Velocity, and then it was the Victory, right? And then it was the yes, Nike Mercurial. I think the whole uh, Elite Pro Academy Club is much easier to be honest. <laughs> I'm a terrible booner, but there were you know they've always been spot on with uh with the late oh lately at least they've been spot on with the with the Legend takedowns. They have been very good. Yeah. Even even the Legend Eight was actually a really it was, solid. It was solid, loop. yeah. Yeah, it, it was Veloce Two. Um, Veloce Two. Very yeah. similar, very similar to the Vapor Ten, for those that tried uh -huh. both. Uh -huh. um, well, I just uh, yeah. just a fun little fun little thing, and you definitely the as you say, you know, the Elite feels a bit nicer on foot. It's a bit richer in the material, and it and it you know the way it bends. Obviously, I've worn that, and and the Pro is straight out of the box. The material you know, flex is a little bit nicer and it, it doesn't create as many creases, but hundred dollars less, that's hard to argue with. I know. And we're, look, it, it's crazy too, because I'm just like yourself. You're probably very easy to, it's easy to convince yourself that you need 
yeah. that little bit better yeah, product is just because even if it's significantly more money for a small difference, but literally the difference is so small between these two that, yeah, you're right. It's like, it's a hundred dollars. It's nearly double the price for I mean, the most incremental difference. You, you say blind testing these. I mean, uh, we've done some on, on, we do these Unisport live sessions. Um, you should check them out, by the way. They're really nice, shameless plug. But uh, we've made these boot grab bags blindfolded and I take pride in being better than I thought I would. Uh, but these would genuinely put them on my feet and I would play in them without knowing what they were. They would be, they would embarrass me because I actually think I would, mm, I could be fooled into thinking they were elites. Yeah, no, for sure. They're that That's, similar. Yeah, that would hurt my boot no pride, but it is what it is. Uh, I mean, good job Nike, but yeah. Go pray the pros, I guess. So there you I go. Mean, so we got some we got some negativity and some positivity towards Nike in this podcast. Great. And in general, I mean, I, I'm the boot lineup they have right now is pretty strong. I gotta be yeah, honest. You know, so. vapors are good. Um, very good. We'll take that discussion uh, on another podcast. We can talk about the current three big speed boots on the market. Uh, mm -hmm. Cause you know, the vapor has trended in a, in a, in a funny direction from where it was when it started. Yeah, yeah, I think so. But I also think there is a lot of being caught up in the hype right now. Cause I still, mm. like I was really high on speed flow and I still am really high on speed flow. And I think I prefer speed flow over mercurial, but put the mercurials back on your feet and they still do a lot of things oh, it's, really it's well. Great boot, but is it yeah. slightly more generalized now than, you know, less of a hardcore speed boot than it was in 16, 17? Yeah, I, I think that's fair. I think it's, uh, it's just, it's, it's not a no brainer anymore. Like it has been oh, for a while. Definitely. Not. I mean, if you're after that, I, I've, I just recorded uh, today, um, Merc versus X versus Ultra which was, it mm -hmm. was a tough video to make because they're all really good. And I, uh, without giving too much away, I made the conclusion that um, I'm X right now. I'm leaning towards the X, but if you want the truest like OG Vapor, Vapor 11 feel, it's probably the Ultras. Like the Ultra has taken over the, like the minimalist, super thin, super lightweight yeah. throne. And th don't get me wrong. I love the Vapors. They, they do everything extremely well. But that, that's just, they're maybe a little bit more generally appealing. And would that put like hardcore speed? We can take that discussion. No, there's a long discussion. Yeah. I just wanted yeah. to, you know, uh -huh. I love the vapors and I would, you know, give them to me and say, you can only wear these for the rest of your life. Cool, done, it's a deal. Um, but I'm just saying, you know, it's tougher, right? It's, it's probably the best speed pool lineup we've ever had. We say it a lot, but it, it, it keeps getting better. No, it really is. Really is. Anyways, um, question, Josh, uh, before we uh, just ramble on about it, <laughs> nothing and everything. We have one from Scott Durag or Derek. Price increase in Australia too about um, all the boots. Uh, the pluses have gone up $20. 0.1 went up $30. Tempo went up $30 too, and so did the new GTs, which is weird. And um, we have a, 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 a usual, a regular commenter, um, Darby Yank or Gaijin Boot Block, Andrew, um, who also made a, a, a long blog post about boot prices, uh, that he thinks that boot prices are, are too high at the moment. What do you, where do you stand in all of this? Like boot prices being, being too high and the market regulating itself and all that jazz? Um, I mean, I think football boots are expensive, mm -hmm. and I think you have more options at the higher price points maybe than ever before, although I say that very hesitantly. But then I also look back at, let's say 2014, Magista Ober 1 and Superfly 4 were $300 retail. Am I wrong? I don't think I'm wrong. What I don't mean? think they were 275. Wow. I want to say they were $300. Let me check. Uh, Ace 16 plus peer control, 2016. Oh, that, was, that, was yeah, th that was 300, 300 uh, euros. $300 football boot, right? So in terms of like top prices that we've ever seen on high-end football boots, we're actually trending a little bit lower than I think we have in the previous 10 years, right? You go back to 2010, you look at Superfly 1, that was 2009. Superfly 1 retailed for 350 US dollars. Wow. Superfly 2 and 3 retailed for 400. 
And then you had Nike's Elite Series, which ranged in price between 300 and 350 as well. So uh, Nike is actually at a at an, a much lower point from a price perspective than what we've seen historically from them. Superfly 4 was 275 euros. 275 euros? 275 I'd have to look up euros. the American retail. I'm not familiar with the European retailer, right, retails, right. but... The 275 euros is more than what they are now, yeah? No, they're no, it's 280, the same. I think. No, they're okay. two. Are they? Uh, I know the Vapors are 250, but let me just check right now. Oh, that they're probably 275 still. I don't know. I, 280. Yeah, 270. 270. So, okay. Uh, gone down five euros. <laughs> okay. So, I just, I think it's as, uh, uh, can you make the argument that football boots are more expensive than they need to be? Sure. Yeah. Are they more expensive than they've ever been? Definitely not. Yeah. Well, yeah. No. Okay. But we see more. No. Well, again, a uh, lot of sure to remakes. I think they were, um, well, I should see sure. three, 350, right? But we've also been talking about, uh, there were the messy speed flows, 300 euros, uh, the, uh, all the accelerator remakes, 350 euros. I think. Yeah. I understand why the prices are high and that's basically to create hype and the whole uh, snob effect that where people want to think because it's expensive, which makes people think that it is very limited and very cool and, and you know, desirable. Look at, uh, uh, what do they call Balenciaga? Those mm. crazy yeah. shoes are uh, really expensive and people just buy it because they're expensive. Anyways, I understand that. But maybe we have also reached a point where the market is going to, I, I expect to correct itself soon because it doesn't fly. It does. It didn't work as well as the brands have intended. I think seeing that the products are still sitting somewhere. Uh, so, and then again, you know, have we created this ourselves? Uh, at the end of the day, yeah, as I see it, it's supply and demand. So as long as the brands want to sell it at the highest price, that's that's natural. Um, retail well, brands always want to do that. The more money they can squeeze out of it, the better. The more money they make. That's that's their whole. Uh, point of existence, right? That's to make mm -hmm. the most money possible. So if they can sell at a higher price, they're going to do that. If they can't, well, they're going to learn and they're going to lower the price until we hit that magic supply and demand uh, sweet spot. That's mm -hmm. the way it works. Uh, so, so yeah, I think as long as people keep buying, the prices will most likely not go down. And at the end of the day, they put a significant amount of money and into R&D and all that stuff, marketing. Are they high? Yeah, sure. But they have been for a long, long time. Yeah. And yeah, they've been expensive for a while. And mm. I'm not sure. I'm sure these brands spend a lot of money and research on the psychology of how much a product costs and the perception of value because of how much it costs. We just saw, I know it's a little bit different for Europe, for but for the US market, the Predator Freak Point Ones and the new X Speedflow Point One compared to the previous generations, which retailed for 225, they've been bumped up to 250. So if we're talking mm. about the Speedflow Point One specifically, now it directly competes with the Vapor 14, not just in terms of being in the speed category, but they're now the exact same price. Mm. So I would wonder if somewhere internally Adidas has decided, hey, maybe we're not selling as many X's as Nike is Mercurials because there's a perception that because the Mercurial is more expensive, it's a better product. So it's, I, I'm not sure what they try to figure out. Again, like you said, I don't think any brand wants to leave money on the table in terms of selling a product for less than they could possibly get for it. And I'm sure they figure out some kind of formula where there's, if we sold the vapor at two hundred dollars versus two hundred and fifty dollars, how many more would we need to sell to make the same amount of money as if we just sold them at two fifty? And then they're probably looking at production numbers at that point and stuff like that. So, and then there's this whole concept of like devaluing your brand by lowering the prices significantly and what effect that might have. I don't know. I, I, it's a really really tricky thing. I think in general everything has gone up in price, mm. not just football boots. Uh, it's inflation. S Right, inflation is a real thing. Well, so well, look, what about Puma then? They they have lowered their prices to two hundred euros, and I I am struggling to remember a time where Puma sold more boots than they are right now. No, and I think that's the right direction for them 
not just from a marketing perspective, but in terms of trying to gain some kind of market share, mm-hmm. I, I think they just came to realize that we cannot compete against the big two at the same price. So by lowering the price, I think it becomes more incentivized to buy something like genius, that. Genius. And then for the people that do go out and do their research, they're going to see the, the true value there, right? Oh, but, but the quality of the products is up there. Um, hmm. Anyways, it's a, it could be a very long discussion. I just wanted to I just wanted to bring it up. Um, and it's it's funny that the price changes somewhere in some areas of the world and doesn't yeah. in others. I, and and the other the other thing that does factor in now that maybe wasn't as big a thing ten years ago is is the whole flipper culture. Yeah. Right. And you're gonna get that with limited stuff, but I think if they make the general release stuff too inexpensive, you're going to get a lot of people buying up inventory and trying to sell it for more. And I guarantee you, and I know there's people that think, oh, it's good for the brands, it's marketing, it's attention for their products, right? But the brands want to sell you the product. They don't want you to buy the product from somebody else that already bought it from them. I don't like resellers. No, period. I'm not a big fan of that either. But I think that's also part of the... Uh, justification and not lowering the prices too much. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. Resellers make me depressed. Um, <laughs> Samuel Huotari. Is the AG version of the Speedflow worth it since the Carbotex insert is such a big factor in the greatness of the FG version? Um, I think it's still a great AG boot uh, and, and there are you know many good things, but it just doesn't compare to the Carbotex tooling. It doesn't. Um, it's a yeah. different experience. I, but I, my counter question to that is how much do you value your knees? That's another thing, yeah. Right. If, I'm, if, you're, look, if I'm going on AG to play with the speed flows, I'm taking the AG. It is what it is. Yeah. Like you just, you have to make that sacrifice. Oh yeah. I think with almost any alternative to an FG stud pattern, right? The brands really focus on that when it comes to their, I guess, the, the predominant technology that they spent the most amount of time on. And we've seen Nike really put more effort into their AG stud patterns and certainly their SG stud patterns. Um, I, I just think for Adidas with that particular boot, it would probably be way too expensive to do the tooling in such a way where they could make that Carbitex sole plate work on an AG stud pattern, yeah. especially given that the reason why we're even calling it a Carbitex plate is because they're working as a partnership with this brand that I'm sure is probably not cheap to work with. So, so, so trying to work that into multiple different stud variations, Mm -hmm. it it just, (laughs) again, I'm sure they've crunched the numbers and it's not worth it. Sure. And, and look, it would be great to have the, the the carbon fiber insert. Sure. But if you go AG and I would, I would get the AG speed flow. And it's, it's still a, it's still a great boot, still a great AG boot. Uh, is it the best AG boot? I would probably still go with the Vapors. With that said, I love that. I love that tooling. But hey, it's not bad. Alex Zemian. Get the Ghosted Point 1 on sale or the Speed Flow Point 1? For me, it's a very, <sighs> it's a very simple answer to that question. Yeah. And like, Bite the bullet, uh, take the hit, buy the Speed Flow Point 1. It is a significantly better boot, in my opinion. You know, it's everything the Ghost it should have been. Such a yeah. big improvement to me. And it's, 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 I've said the same thing in my review of the point one and I, and it, it sounds, it, it makes both of us, I think, sound very contradictory in that we both really liked the X ghosted point one. And I think it was a very impressive football boot. It still is. If, if you're into that rigid plasticky type of feel to the upper, that's the boot to have. It really is quite good. But in comparison to the speed flow, it, it's such a big leap forward as far as improvement is concerned. And for me, comfort, it, it's it's so much more comfortable it's on my feet. It's night and day. Um, yeah, look, I, just I got, think for most people, it's better. We got shown up by a, a better upper coming in and, you know, we were impressed with it back then. And, you know, the very uh, raw strapped in feeling that it gave. But it, it was it comfortable compared to the new speed flow. No, it absolutely wasn't. Uh, so... Yeah, speed flow every single day of the week, even though it, it's more expensive, is mm. what I would do. Just it's a be- it's a much better experience for me. And of course, you should go buy that in sportsstore.com. Shameless plug. <laughs> um, Pericles Mavridis. What a name, Pericles! Wow. 
Can you call me Pericles for, for the rest of the podcast? Please? I can, Pericles. No problem. Uh, thank you. For years, I buy and love Mercurials, but the new Tiempo has impressed me. Should I consider changing to the Tiempos or the Speed Flows? I mean, if uh, you've loved the Mercs, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. Mercs are yeah. f- great. <laughs> great. Uh, yeah, look, I'm still of the opinion that if you really like Mercurials, you, there's no reason to switch. Because no. nothing really feels no, like a Mercurial, yeah. right? And Speed Flow's great, but it doesn't feel like a Mercurial. Um, I would say no. there's a lot of people I've heard this question quite a bit saying, oh, the new Tiempo, it's been marketed towards speed and it has, it has more of a speed boot look to it. I think that was yeah. very deceptive on Nike's part. And I was well, also a little bit, oh, oh. I was surprised. Oh. I was surprised when I put that boot on and it was as, as padded as it was. Yeah. I was expecting something more slim and, and speed boot esque. It's not. If, if you really like the feel of a Mercurial, I think you're going to put that new Tiempo on and you might say, wow, it's really comfortable, but it, it doesn't feel anything like a Mercurial. They are, they are on mean. opposite ends of the football boot spectrum. If you've ever worn a, a Mercurial Vapor 13 Techcraft, it doesn't feel anything like the new Legends. No. I mean, the Legends are lighter and, and I think I said in my review that they have been Mercurialized. They do feel sleeker and faster than the Legends 8 did, in, in my opinion, at least. Uh, but... It, it, there's still some way to go before we're in, in Mercurial territory. So I, I would I would stay with the Mercs, honestly. They're, they're great football boots and they, they will feel familiar. Uh, and there's f- for me, there would be no point risking it unless you're really looking for that specific something that the speed flows will give you. Yeah, and I, I like your comment there and saying they feel familiar. I, I, I think everyone who's watching this podcast certainly after 40 minutes of us talking at this point, if you're still here, you probably think about football boots a little bit too much. And you're going to go through this phase of just wanting to try everything. But trust me when I say that when, when you find that one thing that really just feels right, there's something that I would argue is better about just sticking with that one thing. I mean, we're obviously in different situations where we are sharing opinions on all these new products and we have to try them out. But and I think I've said this before on the podcast, if I wasn't in a position where I was testing boots, I'd be wearing the same boots almost all the time. Just because wouldn't. I like that familiarity, I like that consistency. Definitely. I, I think I think if you're genuinely trying to improve as a player, oh, but yeah, you're also yeah. a little bit of a boot enthusiast, yeah. is like get something that's really good that you are happy with from a performance standpoint and then stick with it. Sure. Because I, I, I think that consistency matters. Right. I definitely wouldn't. Um, I've, but I'm also, I'm weird. I'm a weird man. <laughs> uh, there's a question from Daniel Milton. Can you talk the flappy tongue bit on the speed flow under itself to create a cleaner appearance? And this is where I should edit in this, uh, you know, glass breaking. Because uh, I never thought of that. This is brilliant. This is preventive. You preventive. could. Yeah, he's going to look ridiculous, but hey, it might work. Yeah, you definitely could do that. That's such a weird thing for them to not have noticed like it just it just seems so obvious like you put it on and within five seconds it folds over like nobody noticed that before they sent that to production like that's crazy i know like out of all the people they had product test this thing no one was like hey you know what this is kind of (laughs) weird i don't get it (laughs) and it's not a problem it's just is weird, yeah. Well, it's so you know you would think that with with so much meticulous uh, research and work going into these boots that they would have thought, ah, we don't want that. We want to fix that. For, but well, for such a it's such a well thought out product. Yeah, yeah. Like like you almost can't criticize anything about it, and then they do that. It's like <laughs> wow. Then we're gonna get the Speed Flow Plus Two, and it's basically gonna be the same boot with the tongue flap fixed, just to piss us off. Yeah. Just to trigger us. Uh, one last comment here from William Roland uh, saying, I will take one of each, referring to the new Tiempos, the Speed Flows, and the Ultras. And uh, that sounds like a brilliant plan. A, a man of, of my taste. And uh, by the way, if you don't know where to, to get those, you can do so at unisportstore.com, your favorite neighborhood boot pusher, shameless plug. Because uh, we are nice and we have a nice price. And we rhyme too. <laughs> Very okay. good plug, Jay. Yeah. Oh, it's not Jay. It's Pericles. Pericles, uh, sorry. Uh, I almost I'll, forgot your name. I'll uh, relieve you of your Pericles duties. Uh, we're going to end the Boot Nerds podcast uh, for today right now. Um, thank you so much for your time. If you're still here, you're an OG. 
We appreciate you. If you are still watching, please leave a like on the video. That would help us a lot in getting the exposure that we would like to have for the podcast to spread the word. Also, if you, for some reason, have watched 50 minutes of us rambling and you haven't subscribed to the channel, go do so. It's nice. We make cool stuff. Uh, you can go and uh, do so. White bubble in the middle. You can also go and subscribe to Josh and my channel, uh, sr 4 u and Unisport. And uh, yeah, leave us uh, questions in the comment section right down below. With those words, we're signing off. I'm Jay, my guy. Prove this message. I'm Pericles. And I prove this message. <laughs> Damn it. Thanks for watching. I had one job. One job. <laughs> Forgot God. your own name. God damn. Oh my gosh. God damn. <laughs>